going on, everyone? It's your guy, Cole Jackson, back here in the film room on Two Guys Watching Football. We are going to answer the question, what can Tyler Beatty bring to the Baltimore Ravens in 2022? Looking at last week's game where he got a little bit of an extended run, which I thought was good to see a little bit more, especially a little bit more on the carry side running between the tackles. Um, they ran him on a lot of gap concepts versus zone, which I thought was really helpful because as a college prospect, I thought he... I would say he struggled, but I thought his one of his weaknesses was running between the tackles and contact balance, you know, kind of in the pile. And he's really showing how much he's kind of developed that ability, um, especially some of his one cut ability, um, even when running good gap concepts. So I think we're going to see a little bit of that, of that in the film. We're also going to look a little bit at his pass protection and let's jump right into it. So we are going to start with, let me give a little context before I start, actually. I'm going to start with his pass protection because I do think it's the quickest way for Tyler Beatty to get on the field. Why is that? J.K. Dobbins is a true three down back. Gus Edwards, when he's back and healthy, is the complement. They form the thunder and the lightning approach. I think Mike Davis is going to be in that role that Gus Edwards would normally be in as kind of the, you know, the hammer, the, the, the thunder role. And I think you could also see maybe J.K. working in a little bit slowly. So you see Mike Davis play early or higher per percentage of earlier snaps and that'll kind of fade as jk dobbins gets healthy gets comfortable all that so i do see tyler Beatty having a role in that context because jk may not play th all three downs mike davis may kind of come off the field as a relief and tyler Beatty's a change of pace so it's more that the, the important thing to know here is that he could play early in the 2022 season even as a rookie because of all of those factors it's giving him an opportunity once JK's kind of 100% up to speed, that could fade a little bit. Once Gus is back, that could fade a little bit because who knows what they'll do with Mike Davis. You know, his pass protection is quite good. So will we'll that kind of leave Tyler Beatty in? But not all that, none of that matters if Tyler Beatty can't be a good pass protector. In my opinion, that's why you saw a guy like Tyson Williams lose some opportunities last year because folks thought his pass protection struggled. Um, so all that to say is pass protection is really important to getting on the field early when you're kind of a third down back, because yes, you'll be doing receiving work and we see him split out as a receiver and all that good stuff, but he also needs to pass protect and that's a super important role. So let's jump right into it because I was super impressed with pass protection. So we are going to start here. Let's run it through and then we'll go back and take a look at it. So this is just a play action. Like this isn't true. Like this isn't a true pass set, but what I liked here, so he's going to come downhill and he's going to help McKenzie on the inside here. So he helps the guard, but he sees, you can see right there, he's looking right. He sees the left edge coming and look how he just kind of fades out to give him a little shook. So he kind of hits two guys on one play. He gets right up here, helps McKenzie. He's right in there. That's normally his guy because when you're doing a play action fake, he's kind of going into the gap where he would normally run to sell the run. And that's where that defender was. But as he reads, and that's really the difference with Tyler Beatty and where he's doing a really good job is he's panning the line. He's using good vision. He's diagnosing the play and then he's reacting and getting his hands on the guy. So he kind of reads from left to right. And I'm assuming he goes left to right because they have a three man protection on the left side of the line. They only have two on the right. So kind of read towards the, uh, where you have less numbers. And just look right there. It gets kind of hands on both guys. Really nice work. Just a play action pass. I, I wouldn't, I, I just wanted to show it because I think it really shows his diagnosing skills and his vision. I think this is where we get to see, this was his really good pass set. Yeah. So this is that touchdown to Rally Webb. So there goes Rally Webb. Um, let's go back and take a look at that. So he's aligned here. They have, we have a five-man protection in Josh. All well, sorry, we have a six-man protection in with Tyler Beatty. They have a drop going here from uh, their Sam linebacker. Or no, that'd be their rush linebacker on the weak side. And then they're blitzing a DB. You can see him just on the left side of the screen here, and that's what Tyler Beatty reads. Reads, and that's why he goes instantly left here. See how he goes right across the front of Brown, and just really, really impressive there. Absolutely no hesitation to step up and kind of lay the hammer on on the blitzing player, just boom. So again, we're seeing both aspects, really good read, reading that DB coming up to the line of scrimmage, reading him coming off the edge that we have. Um, they have a, 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 I guess that'd be a, 
That'd be a four I. So they have a four I, a seven tech, and then a blitzing D, uh, DB coming from the nine tech. So what that does is it really stresses your guard and your tackle. So your guard has to shift out to the four tech, and then Tyler or Tyree Phillips needs to do a more of a vertical set on the edge player. And that whole idea there, they actually run a little bit of a stunt to really get those two focused here and create the number. So you've completely used those two players. That actually, that's a really nice pass off of that stunt. Good work by Phillips and Cleveland. But you've completely occupied those two offensive linemen, and you're just completely freeing up a free-range runner. So Tyler Beatty makes this play happen. If he doesn't step up and give a good block, it's not just that he gave a block. If he doesn't step up and give a good block, that touchdown doesn't happen. So really good defensive design there from the Cardinals just to free up that guy. But Tyler Beatty coming across, getting his job done. Really impressive. And so why is this important? Because if you can't pass protect, you can't get on the field to do this. And this isn't a very impressive play. It's just a rollout. But he's not going to get these opportunities if he's not able to pass protect. So, um, I mean, I don't want to go on about this play. He's wide open. It was a rollout. It's all that good stuff. But it is super important because, again, you're not going to get those opportunities if you're not doing if you're not having successful pass protection. And then here we see a screen, really impressive work, cross formation screen. Um, really like what he did here. So let's go back because this is just, again, savvy play. So he needs to also, because he's crossing the formation specifically, he needs to sell that he's in pass protection. And so what he does is he steps up and he rolls off of, because those alignment are letting him go, right? That's how you get the, the cleared space. So to continue the sell so it's not kind of given away, he steps up and acts like he's pass blocking, but then rolls off to keep his forward momentum going and get open. And so some ugly blocking here doesn't really go for much, but again, savvy work. Like he's just a very savvy, smart player. He seems to have really good recognition and awareness. I've been really impressed with what he's done. Now we're going to see some of his runs and what he can do between the tackles on the ground. So again, we're going to see this one's just looks like this looks like their wham concept that they run. So he's just going to go up, see how he dips his shoulder there as he's going through the hole. He's going to run right behind Mason. McKenzie has a nice block. If Falele gets on the inside shoulder there, this, this could have had potential for six because watch where Cologne gets to. Cologne's already up here. Mason's going to take, I think that's the, that'd be the will. So Cologne climbs to 43, the will linebacker. 38 gets to Mike. If Falele gets on the Sam here, or that might be the safety that he's got a clear hole, but I like how he gets low going through the hole. He's nice and low compact, um, you know, really good running style and good explosiveness through the gap. There's no hesitation. And so here we see a draw and it's the same idea. There's a nice little, so he's going to hit him with, uh, so they're going to go QB draw or running back draw. And so he instantly sees it pretty clogged up here. Not a whole lot of daylight and he's going to cut right behind Ben Cleveland, and then he gets low, compact, runs up the gap. So he probably could have carried on through up here. Let's get a little bit of a look. He has a little bit of room there, but I wonder if he feels uh, the the defender here, and he can't see because of the, the flagpole, but I wonder if he feels the defender crossing Ben Cleveland's face. So watch Ben Cleveland right here behind the flagpole. See how he's kind of, I'll go slow. See how he's cutting across. So if he goes up through the gap behind Ben Mason, because people are probably like, why didn't he go through that hole? That's probably a tackle from behind because Ben Cleveland kind of loses leverage. And so instead he cuts it behind Ben Cleveland and Cleveland finishes that way. So really good working off your block. Um, again, I think if he kind of goes straight up behind Mason there, he's probably getting tackled from behind, but he uses that cut or that uh, cut step gets low, gets up again through compact all the way up. So really impressive stuff there. Again, good vision, feeling the blocker, feeling the defender crossing Cleveland's face. And instead of just hitting the gap and running uh, for the sake of running, use a little bit of your elusiveness, use a little bit of your cut ability, cut, open a new gap, go through. So there we see a little bit of a counter. Um, really well blocked. So I mean, not much here from... The running back side of things, you can see Tyree Phillips kind of comes down and has a really nice down block. The puller opens up a lane here really well. Well, could have been better, but I think that was the fullback coming across. That's Mason, right? 
go back and see this. Yeah, this is like a little bit of a... It looks like power, but it's a counter. That's that's kind of new. Um, anyway, really impressive work there. Just stay low, stay tight to your blocks, get upfield. See here. So this is a power concept. Again, showing good, good vision. It's pretty well blocked on the down block. You're going to see Falele and Josh Oliver blow their guy off the line. Ben Cleveland pulls around. Ben Cleveland gets into this guy right there. Really impressive pull by Cleveland. And so you can see that kind of gap open up between Oliver, and I believe that's Nick Boyle right there, 86. And he goes exactly where that hole was. So, you know, again, good vision, stays low. You can see him right here fighting for extra yards. His vision is just like it pops on every play. He's constantly making the right decision, the right read, the right cut. And this is just showing his speed. This is just a simple toss. Nice seal block there by, I believe, 62 is David Scherr. Um, But this is kind of what he brings a little bit different. It's kind of the element that Justice Hill bring, uh, or brought. It was that bring. Um, it, it's just more of that speed element. So his ability to get out in the open space, get around his blocks, get up field. You know, if, if Shamar Bridges holds on to that uh, block a little bit longer, he might have had something going. So um, just a much different player. Really impressive. And so why am I showing this play? So he had some negative runs. I think he had, I think he had 12 carries and I think four of them were for negative yardage. So that doesn't sound good, but that's why we need to go into the film, right? That's why we need to study film. We need to understand what happened on those plays. You can't just take his production and say, oh, not playing well. So what happens here? This is another draw. So you see the, uh, the quarterback fake completely blown up here. Tyler Beatty has absolutely nowhere to go. I think that's uh, Isaiah McKenzie loses that block. Let's see what happens. Let's focus on 69 here. So left guard here, or right guard, sorry. Right guard and fullback are coming up. And McKenzie just whips. He doesn't block anybody. So they have 56 looping behind 50. And now they have two guys beyond. He's reaching. That's You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that reach where he's like, ah, God. Um, and he's, uh, Tyler Beatty has nowhere to go. They, they squeeze him here. They take both sides of the fullback and there's no daylight. So this happened about, I, he had four negative runs and I would say all four were pretty poorly blocked. So, you know, at some point you do want to see the ability to break tackles and make something out of nothing. I'm not sure you can do it on that play. So that, I just want to show that for context because I know sometimes we see negative runs and it's like, well, he's, you know, he's not making guys miss and it's like well sometimes you need your own line to block and so you know overall i'm super impressed with tyler Beatty. i think he's shown a ton he shows a different skill set really impressed with his vision his pass protection it's all coming a long way since his days at missouri so super impressive super looking forward to this kid that's all i have for you guys today be good to yourselves be good to each other peace out everyone